Dear audience, Assalamu alaikum. I am Professor Shamsud Jaman, Professor of Pathology, Rangpur, Bangladesh. Today, I welcome all in lecture on pathology. This is my 11th lecture. In the 10th lecture, I have discussed about fat necrosis and caseous necrosis briefly. Today, gangrenous necrosis. Gangrenous necrosis. To know about gangrenous necrosis, we have to know first what is gangrene. Now come to gangrene. Now come to gangrene. We know some of morphologic changes following cell death in living tissue is called necrosis. So if this living tissue, it is composed of many cells, composed of cells. If some cell undergo death within this living tissue, there are changes occur within the dead cell. The summation of this changes is called necrosis. What is gangrene? Gangrene is the massive necrosis. Massive necrosis with superimposed massive necrosis with superimposed saprophytic saprophytic infection is called gangrene or another definition another definition or massive necrosis with putrefaction with putrefaction is called gangrene so massive necrosis with superimposed saprophytic infection is called gangrene or massive necrosis with putrefaction is called gangrene. Now come to saprophyte. Before that, so it is massive necrosis. If the necrosis is massive one, massive one, and when there is massive necrosis, if there is superimposed saprophytic infection or if there is putrefaction, then this is called gangrene. Then this is called gangrene. Now come to what is saprophyte. Saprophyte, it is a plant, a plant, a plant or fungus or microorganism. So it is plant or it is fungus or it is microorganism that lives on dead organic matter dead organic matter this is saprophyte this is saprophyte the what is the role of saprophyte saprophyte is the decomposer of dead organic matter saprophyte is the decomposer decomposer of dead organic matter. So this saprophyte causes decomposition in this dead tissue. Among the saprophytes, saprophytic bacteria is the major decomposer of organic matter. So, 
massive necrosis superimposed with saprophytic bacterial infection bacterial infection is known as gangrene so it is bacterial infection now come to types of gangrene dry gangrene Dry gangrene is also called mummification. It is also called mummification and moist gangrene, moist or wet gangrene. Now come to dry gangrene. In this type of gangrene, the coagulative pattern of necrosis is predominant. In this type, in this type, coagulative pattern of necrosis is predominant. Is predominant and the common sites of dry gangrene common sites where we can get usually dry gangrene extremities extremities are the common sites either up, upper hand upper limbs or lower limbs Now come to an example of dry gangrene in extremities. Example of dry gangrene in extremities. Burger's disease. Burger's disease. You know it is called thrombophlebitis and pro thrombophlebitis angitis. So, Burger's disease is an example of dry gangrene. You know, it is it occurs in those individuals who are a smoker. Now, come to moist gangrene. Moist gangrene. In this type of gangrene. In this type, liquefactive, liquefactive pattern of necrosis is predominant. Is predominant. So, in dry gangrene, coagulative pattern of necrosis is predominant, and in moist gangrene or in wet gangrene, liquefactive pattern of necrosis is predominant. Now come to common sites. Sites intestine when intestinal obstruction. When intestinal obstruction, intestinal obstruction, and in strangulated hernia. strangulated hernia. Another side testes when testicular torsion when testicular torsion. Dear audience, if this is testes, spermatic cord with testes like this, If there is torsion of the spermatic cord, the venous return is impaired. So, testes undergo moist gangrene.
in the site ovary when torsion or twisting twisting of ovary when twisting of ovary the audience you know if this is the fallopian tube this is the fimbriated end of fallopian tube and there is ovary at the fimbriated and you know if there is twisting of the fallopian tube there will be impairment of venous return and ovary undergo moist gangrene then lungs valva oral cavity etc these are the sites of moist gangrene now come to what are the differences between dry gangrene and moist gangrene now come to differences between dry gangrene and moist gangrene differences between dry gangrene and moist gangrene affected part is dry and affected part is wet that is moist cause cause dry gangrene is caused by loss of arterial blood supply it is caused by loss of arterial blood supply and moist gangrene is caused by due to impaired venous return impaired venous return dear audience suppose suppose this is arterial supply artery artery blood is running like this and this is the tissue and this is the venule it carries blood venule blood goes to the tissue via the artery and supplies oxygen to blood here and then blood is drained by the vein if there is occlusion of the artery if there is occlusion of the artery what will happen the tissue will not get no blood so it will undergo ischemic necrosis ischemic necrosis and as blood does not go to the tissue due to occlusion of the artery the blood that was previously in the tissue it will drain by the vein and the tissue become dry so dry gangrene is caused by loss of arterial blood supply again if there is no occlusion of artery but there is impairment of venous return blood is uh, coming from the tissue slowly this is impairment of venous return uh, at one time as there is slowly blood is coming from the tissue via the vein the arterial blood supply will be diminished and tissue will get no oxygen blood ultimately but there is blood deoxygenated blood tissue undergo necrosis but the tissue will be moist or wet foul smell foul smell absent in dry gangrene but present in moist gangrene foul smell A spread A spread A spread dry gangrene slow rapid line of demarcation line of demarcation <coughs> present in dry gangrene absent in moist gangrene dear audience 
these are the differences between dry gangrene and moist gangrene. I have told you here line of demarcation. Now come to line of demarcation. What is this? Suppose, <coughs> suppose Suppose this is the gangrenous part, this is the gangrenous part, dry gangrene, gangrenous part and this gangrenous part will be, it is non-viable, it is non-viable and this is non-gangrenous part and it is viable. So a line that demarcates the viable tissue from the non-viable tissue is called line of demarcation. What is this? Line that demarcates that demarcates viable tissue from the non-viable non-viable is called line of demarcation. Now come to how the line of demarcation is formed. Line of demarcation is formed by contraction of granulation tissue. It is formed by contraction of granulation tissue. Granulation tissue. Now come to what is the clinical importance of line of demarcation? What is the importance of line of demarcation? Before that, how can you know the line of demarcation? How can you know line of demarcation? How can you know line of demarcation? <coughs> if you can feel the pulsation at the line of demarcation, there will be no pulsation. Number one. Number two, be, uh, proximal to line of demarcation, the tissue is warm. And distal to line of demarcation, the tissue is cold. So by this way, you can identify the line of demarcation. Now come to the surgical importance of line of demarcation. Line of demarcation. Surgical importance of line of demarcation. Surgeon first identify the line of demarcation and he or she amputates the non viable tissue above the or proximal to the line of demarcation. What is the importance? Surgeon amputates. Amputates the gangrenous part. Gangrenous part. Proximal. Proximal or above proximal or above the line of demarcation. So surgeon amputates the non-viable tissue proximal to the line of demarcation or above the line of demarcation. If surgeon amputates at the line of demarcation, what will happen? You know line of demarcation is, com is composed of Granulation tissue and it is caused by contraction of the granulation tissue. So, this line of demarcation has composed of non viable tissue and also viable tissue. If surgeon amputates at the line of demarcation, some non viable tissue may remain there and it will progress. And if he or she amputates it below the line of demarcation, the gangrene will progress. So, surgeon amputates the organ or 
the gangrenous part above the line of demarcation. I ask a student usually uh, if anybody suffers from gangrene, you don't know whether it is, it is dry gangrene or moist gangrene and uh, patient is not exposed to you, patient is in a room, just you go to the patient with a closed eye, can you say whether the, the gangrene is dry or moist? Yes. With closed eye, if there is, if, if, the, uh, if the patient in the room and if the student gets foul smell, it is definitely moist gangrene. Now come to gas gangrene. It is a variety of moist gangrene. A variety of moist gangrene. A variety of moist gangrene where gas is produced. It is called gas gangrene. Dear audience, you know saccharolytic clostridia produces gas. Saccharolytic clostridia produces gas. Today up to this, thanks all.